bunch of fun. A wonderful, you got your little hand sanitizer, yay! All right, you have in the notebook, yes, yes, you can write some things down. And inside your notebook, you have stickers! Oh, wonderful stickers that make you happy. Look at that, we like the stickers. And then also your little and bookmark, also in a pen. You're going to be writing some things down because this is a workshop. We're going to work some shop some things out. And also you have some note cards. These note cards, if you have a question or something that you want to talk about or you want to ask, you can um, write your question down on here. And we will and uh, we'll have someone collect the cards um, prior to intermission. And we will you get to have your question answered. You don't have to write your name on the card and everything but if, if you just want to use it for extra note space you can use that too all right that's good and of course you have um on the table in front of you everyone should have at least um your event book and, and uh your event booklet it has some wonderful information about our speakers what we're going to be doing today our objective as well as um the wonderful we thank god for our wonderful business sponsor that you see on the back yay shout out to miss the the infamous Mrs. Veronica McMillan, who is part of the Micro Nonprofit Network. Yay! Thank you! Now we blessed out for her. And I also included um, this particular workbook. This is called What Do You See? One of the um, one of the master classes that I offer is called What Do You See? Seeing yourself the way that God sees you. And this is actually the, the workbook that goes with that class. And if you are part of the Living a Purpose of Life group, you um they have seen the first session already um posted on inside the group and you can always join that group and um get to look at that for free and then the next two sessions for the next two modules that are in here will be posted soon okay all right so this is going to help you as we're going to discover that build character and then we're going to build some character so we thank god for that so as we get ready um to get started here let me just go over just a few more things we're thanking God for Miss Latoya as she's yet and still on her way. We bless God for her. So the objective of this, so the theme for living a purposeful life this year is building character and cultivating integrity. Building character and cultivating integrity. And this is, um, we're having two events. This is the first of the two events. We are going to, today, as we build character, talk about what does it mean to have good character. And when we say good, because we are kingdom citizens, kingdom believers, we're talking about good kingdom Christ-like character. Um, there's uh, many definitions for character in and of itself. Um, when we define character, a lot of people think of, you know, your virtue, your personality, things of that nature. But we're going to go a little deeper. What does the word have to say about that? And also with that, we understand that it, re it requires you to have good mental health, emotional stability, as well as spiritual well-being. You have to be well in your spirit. And we know all these things come through the power of God's word. Amen? Through the power of God's word. And so our objective today is to define and understand the nature of godly Christian-centered character. We're also going to identify some stumbling blocks and some hindrances to the kingdom believer, especially in today's society, as we have um, gone through a multitude of things over the past two almost three years you know we've, we've seen you know economic instability and, and all these different things um people have to suffer personal loss and so the pandemic of course and all and a multitude of other things as well as a result so how do we maintain our kingdom character for god how do we maintain our zeal because whether you believe it or not the things that happen around us impact us emotionally mentally physically spiritually and if you say oh it doesn't bother me i'm not i'm not concerned i'm not bothered well i would have to say that you're deceived because <laughs> something has happened <laughs> around us and so we have to be aware of the enemy's devices oftentimes the enemy will try to come in and use these things as an opportunity to wear out the saints you're not studying like you used to there's some, there's some things that you used to do that you were gung-ho for, but now all of a sudden your zeal has weakened. So how do we build up? How do we um, strengthen that which remains? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And so with all these things, we see um, some reference scriptures that I'll probably go over a little bit later 
is Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, Philippians 2, 12 through 16, um, 1 Samuel 16, uh, 7, as well as 2 Peter 1, 3 through 10. And so we will see, uh, we'll be going over that in a few, um, in a little bit. So first, let me introduce our wonderful panel. Yay! Also, to my furthest left, we have the wonderful Elder Doretta Asper. Woo! All right. Elder Asper, tell us about yourself. Well, I am a native of Franklin, Virginia. Um, I have been residing in Chesapeake, Virginia since 1998. I um, attended Norfolk State University um, and also the Logos <laughs> Bible Institute that was here in Chesapeake. Um, I am an evangelist, a workshop speaker. I'm an author, a new author, um, to God be the glory. And um, I just love God. I love his people. Um, I am a person who is transparent, sometimes to a fault, but um, I do that all to let someone know that I've been where you've been. I understand where you are. So when I tell you um, what God is telling me to tell you, you will understand that it comes from a pure place. Yes, awesome. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. And we also have the P -H, uh, PhD, yes. Yes. the soon-to-be PhD elect, yes. uh, Ms. Williams. S. Williams. <laughs> Woo! Uh, and tell us about Sure. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'm excited to be here. I think this is amazing, and I don't take any opportunity lightly when there's a moment for me to be able to share about spirituality and our mental health. Um, but just a little bit about me. I have been in the mental health field for about 18 to 19 years now. I have a master's degree in psychology, and I'm actually a few hours away from being Dr. Shirts Wood. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> So I'm finishing my uh, PhD in clinical psychology with an emphasis in industrial and organizational psychology. Um, the other thing I do is I've been teaching at a university for about 11 years now. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have adult children and they've been to Norfolk State or ECSU, maybe even TCC, there's a chance if they've taken the psychology course, they've run into me at some point. So truly, I'm just blessed. This has been, this is amazing. And um. I'm excited to be here. Yay! Awesome! Bless the Lord! Bless the Lord! Amen. And again, I am Dr. Miracle Pettinger. I'm a wife, mother, author, speaker, pastor, apostle. I also have um, earned my doctoral degree from, um, from Regency Christian College based on Jacksonville, Florida, uh, with, um, in theology with a focus in family systems theory. And with family systems theory, basically discovering and understanding how the system and the nature of families work, basically what is a functional family and what is a dysfunctional family. And a lot of it has to do with the way that your mind, how you instill values into your children and also the mindset, how it's necessary to have a paradigm shift from one generation to the next. And I also had opportunity in one, my latest book, um, Polluted in Your Own Blood, basically talks about that, understanding the iniqu generational iniquities, overcoming them through the power and the blood of Jesus and the word of God, and then maintaining your deliverance after, all right? And so that way you can operate in the kingdom family, the functional kingdom family of God, and be that catalyst in your own family. And so that's what my, uh, my newest book it talks about is over there. It's in the foyer. And you see all of our tables out in the foyer. So it's featuring our books and the things that we have to offer you as additional tools, all right, additional tools to help you along the way. So, of course, as you see inside of your pamphlet um, on that first page, we had a little program there. We may not go in the exact order, hallelujah, but guess what? It's all good. All right. And so what we're going to do, is this going to be, oh, do you have a, a note there? Yes, no, 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 no. Okay. Well, we're going to go on. Yay. All right. So we're going to get started. So uh, we talked about the welcome. Yes. You, you feel welcome? Yes. Good. Yay. I welcome you all. Yay. In Jesus' name. All right. And so what we're going to do as we get started here, um, we're going to talk about just a few things and then we'll take a quick, we'll inter intercess for a moment and then we'll, and we'll get into worship and just continue. See how God does. How about that? Amen. So as I mentioned, our objective is to understand and define what is godly Christian-centered character. 
and looking at those stumbling blocks. Now, if you look in your um, pamphlet there that's in your bag, or actually not in your bag, it's on the table, hallelujah, um, you'll see I mentioned here that you know, in recent events, you see that the devil really is trying harder and harder to discourage the saints, to wear out the saints in their soul and in their spirit. And with that, between those um, physical illnesses, the personal tragedies, the social unrest, the economic stability, the mental fatigue. Oh, my goodness. Mental fatigue. Oh, emotional stress. And even more, the enemy wants to muzzle the mouth of the believer as well as silence their voice. Have you ever gotten to a point where you felt like, I wish I could say something, I want to say something, but how are they going to respond? Are they going to automatically cancel me now? <laughs> With this cancel culture we got going on. And, and it seems like that zeal and passion that you had, the boldness that you had at one point, that it seems like it's dwindled. And now, and because you know what God has called and purposed you to do, and God holds you and requires of you and holds you accountable to it, now that you choose not to do that good thing, you know that sin, right? Oh, if you're not doing what God told you to do. Hmm. So what is it that's making us kind of shrink back? What's hindering you? You were running well. You were doing good. What's hindered you? But guess what? You're not the only one. It's happened to all of us. You are not alone in this. And with that, we understand that because the enemy is trying to muzzle the mouth and silence the voice of the believer, we need to understand that the power of God's word and using his authority is still available to us. It's still available to us. And so what we're doing here today, as it says to there, right in the bold, we're going to serve the enemy notice that we are aware of his devices and we will no longer accept the burdens of society's pressures. We're not going to be overtaken by life circumstances. Nor are we going to be tormented in our mind, will, and emotions. Instead, we're going to choose to apply the healing virtue of Jesus Christ and operate in the daily, operate daily in the victorious kingdom lifestyle God has ordained for us. Hallelujah. And so with that, we see, you know, stuff happens in, to our minds, stressed out. So let's start off first on a scale from 1 to 10. How are you doing today? Let's think about it in your mind. 10 being, I'm absolutely fabulous, all is well, good, wonderful. One like, you know what, I need prayer right now because I don't know how I'm going to get out the door. On a scale of 1 to 10, how are you doing today? Think about that number in your mind. All right? All right. So if you are like between, let's say, 8 to 10 and you would like to raise your hand, Eight to ten, you feeling good? Raise your hand. Yes, yes, good. Yes, all right, yay. Okay, all right. How about like seven to five? Maybe. Ah, oh, we're good. All right. Okay. Oh, if you're raising your hand to your heart, <laughs> God. all right. And if anything lower than that, guess what? You won't lead that way. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to lead that way. Amen. So we thank God for you. So, let's call you Doctor Sharice. Doctor Sharice. So what does mental health have to do with building kingdom Christian, a, a good kingdom Christian character? Wow, wow. So something you said earlier that you, you were all in my notes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but when she started talking about being obedient, so obedience helps to define your character. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when God assigns a purpose to you and he's already given you what he wants you to do and you're not obedient, it leads to frustration. And what happens when we're in a season of frustration? We begin to start to doubt ourselves. Yeah. We begin to say that we're not equipped to do what God has called us to do. We feel inferior. We start losing sleep at night. Some of us become sad because we're not work, walking in our purpose. So obedience is essential to character. When you are obedient, it basically allows you to say, God, I accept what you're calling me to do. Come on, how many of you all have like this purpose? You know what God is calling you to do. How many people know you have a calling on your life? You can just raise your hand. Okay, are you walking in that calling? You can slip your hand up and if you're not, you just shake your head and that's okay. <laughs> are you walking in your calling? Are you doing what God has assigned you to do? Has he given you an idea, a vision or a dream and you've taken that thing and you've thought about it, but that's as far as it's gone. 
You've not taken the time to write it down. You don't know how to execute it. You know it's just in your mind. Well, the next step is to release that thing. And if you've not released it, are you truly walking in your purpose? Or have you just been spending time thinking about your purpose? Are you ruminating about your purpose? Are you thinking, this is who I could be. This is who God has called me to be. But I'm not sure how to connect to reach that place to get to that point. So that's what's important when it comes to obedience. Are you obedient? Do you know what your assignment is? Are you ready to take the next step? Who do you need to connect with? Who do you need to partner with to help you make this thing come into pass, to help you make this a reality? So that's what that obedience is about. And when we are disobedient, we're walking in some struggle. There's conflict. And why is conflict here? Conflict is here to create tension. Not all tension is bad. OK, there's some good tension. Sometimes when God sends conflict, it's a moment to help you realize it's time to go forward. How many people are ready to go forward? How many people are ready to launch? Come on. You have your purpose and your purpose is right at the edge. I'm almost there. Even as a professional, Do you know, 18 years ago, God spoke to me and said, Sharice, you're going to be a doctor. And I said, OK, well, I'm ready. I'm going to go sign up for schools. And immediately I started applying for schools. I was still in the master's program. I graduated at 19 and I was walking right into my master's program. And God said, you're going to be a doctor. And I said, OK, I believe you and I'm ready. So I'm applying for schools. Did not get accepted. They looked at me. I don't even think some of them responded. Some of them said, why don't you work on your bachelor's before you get a doctor? And I said, well, I'm in a master's program. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. So there was all types of discouragement. And I thought, OK, God, you said that this would happen. When is it going to happen? I did not realize that it was going to take 18 years of praying, fasting, life. How many mm -hmm. people go through life? Come on, life experiences. Some of you, even on the way here, you experienced something in life that deterred you from getting here yes. to being in position and getting what you needed. Mm -hmm. So that happened. Life happened for 18 years. And I said, OK, Lord, I guess I'm not going to be anybody's doctor. I'm going to have to set to, with this master's degree. And it's just going to be whatever it is. Then mm -hmm. I looked at my middle sister and lo and behold, she was going from Howard University to American University, mm. getting her law degree. And I said, well, Lord, you told me I was going to be a doctor. Clearly, I'm next. <laughs> then my baby sister is heading on from her master's. She's walking across the stage, getting her doctorate. And I'm like, well, Lord, you said I was going to get a doctorate. Went the first shall be last. What's going on here? <laughs> and see, this is the thing. When you start to go through things, you'll start to see what that character looks like. Yes. What happens when you are delayed? You're mm. not denied, but you're delayed. How does that impact your character? Mm. So eventually the Holy Spirit said, I'm opening the door for you to go. And I said, well, Lord, about time. No, that, is, that is probably what I felt. But I said, God, I thank you. So he opened the door for me to get through this process. And it was not easy. It was not easy because mm. life was in the midst. Tension was in the midst. Conflict was in the midst. Yeah. So yes, it takes a lot to define your character. Who are you? If you don't know who you are, clearly we won't see your character. Ooh. How is this character thing revealed? Now, I'm going to stop because I think she asked me one question and I'm not <laughs> sure if I answered that or if I kept going. So let me bring it back on there because oh, you'll hear from me in a minute. So yes. go ahead, Doctor. So you're saying that um, so it's mental health and developing our character. So the way that you begin to think about yourself yes. during the times of, try, of, the, of going through Situations, yes. circumstance, issues, problems, trials to reach your purpose. Yes. How did you feel in, well, actually, how more, how did you, what did you think of yourself concerning all those things? I know you mentioned that, the, okay, Lord, why is this happening and I'm not there yet? This is, is this a delay or is this a, what, what's going on? Okay, there's maybe some confusion. Yes. What other things were racing through your mind during that time? So the enemy caused me to believe that I was not called. Mm. that I, I was not clear on my purpose. Somehow I missed God because it didn't happen in the timing that I thought that it would happen. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I wanted to help people. I knew that I wanted to be a blessing to people. I knew I wanted to connect people to therapy. But God, if you don't put me in this position, how will I be received? If I don't get the credentials, if I don't get this, and God began to say, what do you mean? I called you. So when I call you, I qualify you. Yes, the doctorate is great. It looks good. It feels good. It's a lot of work. People don't even understand the dissertations, what you write, what you have to go through. But that's not the point. I called you regardless. But when you go through that period of tension and conflict, 
you forget the assignment on your life. Oh my goodness. And there are times where you become distracted. How many people have become distracted? I, just a show of hands. Do you know how many people I have supported to walk in the calling that I felt like God had called me to? So I said, God, did you call me to be a supporting cast member or did you call me to be the leading role? Which part am I supposed to be playing here? But God always says, what you do for others, I will make happen for you. Yes. So this begins, amen, amen. Yes. I begin to shift the way that I saw myself. If I'm good enough to help you, I'm good enough to do it for myself. Mm -hmm. You have to love yourself enough to make things happen for you. It's great that you can be a blessing here. You can be a blessing there. Mm -hmm. You can pour out to everybody else. But if you can't minister to yourself, yes. who are you? Mm. And, that, and to add some Bible to that, just to let you know, yes. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, which is so awesome because as she's talking about this, um, in the New King James Version, it says, not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. And in the New Living Translation, that same verse says, we, we can rejoice too. When we run into problems and trials, you running into them. No, for we know that they help us to develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character. The way you go through, you have to go through God's way. The way you have to have a mind shift change. You can't just go through with the mindset of, oh, woe is me. I'm, I'm going to stay in my feelings because I don't know what's going on. And it has to be a sense of rejoicing and you rejoicing because you know that God has the solution to whatever problem you run into or runs up on you unexpectedly. With so many things that have happened, how was our response? What was our mindset? Are we going through with a poverty mindset because the gas prices are so high? I'm not going to be able to pour gas. I'm not going to be able to go anywhere because I'm assuming I don't have the money. Or are we going through with the mindset of he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the God who provides all my needs. He has a, a cattle of a thousand hills. So if he has that much in stock in this day and age, whatever I need for my vehicle that's necessary to accomplish the kingdom assignment, he has already provided. There has to be a mindset uh, that you have to shift your mindset away from what is uh, socially acceptable and what is the contemporary. Us, oftentimes people want to um, subscribe to what is socially acceptable, what the world puts out there and says, because this is happening, this is how you respond. Whereas kingdom believers, we do not respond the world's way. We are to respond according to the word of God. And the word of God says that we are to rejoice. <laughs> That's what the word says. And in doing so, guess what? Knowing that all this is going to strengthen your character, and it builds your confidence in the hope of salvation and, and knowing that God loves us so much. He loves you so much that he has strategically positioned himself to be in a covenant relationship with you. He loves you so much that according to Ezekiel 16, um, the latter part of 8 and, and into verse 9, I was studying this the other day, it, and what God showed me was God... And this is my, um, my interpretation of this, my interpretation of the revelation God gave me. God loved us so much that he lawyered up with himself. <laughs> he lawyered up with himself to secure the bag. <laughs> that was you. And knowing that bag was messy, he still made a covenant, a, a covenant contractual agreement to be with you, to love you, to be faithful unto you. And not only that, when he secured you, he cleaned you up thoroughly. He erased all of the clinging blood, as the Amplified said. All the, the, what was messy about you that kept clinging to you. He cleaned you all the way up. Not only did he clean you up, on top of that, because he loved you so much, he anointed you with oil. Yeah. You mean, Lord, knowing the messiness that I would put in the bag myself, that you didn't give me, put it yourself. You still chose me, cleaned me up, got rid of it, and as long as I stay in position, I can stay clean. And you anointed me with oil. You put your anointing up and on me to demonstrate your glory and your kingdom. 
So I don't have to have a confused mind and keep questioning and having confusion and anxiety concerning what it is you've called and purposed me to do because you've made every crooked path straight. That's what he does because he loves you just that much. So I can demonstrate the good godly character of God because I choose to have the mindset of God. I'm going to renew my mind daily through the power of his word. So I'm going to continue to think the way that God thinks. And with that, we're going to feel the way that God feels. So Elder Ashford, all of this is going on. People are frustrated. They get angry. They get upset. Do we have a right to kind of feel the way we want to feel? Yeah, you got every right to feel the way you want to feel. But, but is it the right? No, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> because if you're in Christ, you're no longer your own. Oh. So with that being said, um, you, you cannot walk in your calling, your purpose, everything that God has told you that you are in him until you get your mind right. Mm. Parents used to always say, why are you acting like that? Get your mind right. Mm -hmm. That means you all over the place. You have to have mental and emotional, really emotional stability. Yeah. Because if you don't have your emotional stability, how can you even hear God? Mm. How can you even hear direction? Because you have the quiet, the voices in your head. Some people don't want to talk like that. But they're like, I ain't crazy. I ain't got no voices in my head. Well, mm. why do you do what you do? What tells you to do what you do? Your mm. mind. They say it's a terrible thing to waste. Please yeah. don't. <laughs> so with that being said, get your emotions in check. And I had to do that myself. Yeah. I had to come in alignment. And you can't. You can't try to get your emotional stability in check when you're around unstable people. Mm. And I had to remove myself from unstable people. Because sometimes they say a bird of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. If you want to say, well, you hook up with another unstable person and another unstable person, y'all just crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Because you can't even help each other. Mm -hmm. It's not like one is trying to pull the other. Y'all walking together and agreeing, but agreeing mm -hmm. on the wrong thing. Yeah. So until y'all you get your mind right, I I look at um First Corinthians um chapter fifteen verse thirty three. It says, "Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Yes, it ruins good character. Yeah. So who you link up with, who you hang with, who you chill with, Netflix and chill. Who you <laughs> come on? Who you date? Who you marry? You can cover with whether it be church, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in the world." and their mindset is totally different from yours two things are going to happen either you are going to pull them your way which mm -hmm. you feel is right or they're going to pull you your yeah. how can two walk together unless they agree and it's not just always talking about marriage people use that when it comes to marriage how can two we got to be um equally yoked that comes in business as well mm -hmm. you can't have a business plan and you hook up with your your business partner and her man is way over there no i want to do it this way no y'all don't have nothing on paper that y'all gonna go along with together mm. y'all are equally yoked y'all are not that y'all are bad people y'all just don't need to be hooked together in business mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying other things y'all might be okay but business might not be the one so to get your emotional stability together First, you have to go in prayer. God, you have to know that you are unstable. Are unstable. You mm -hmm. have to already know that. You're like, okay, God, my mind is not all the way again. I need to renew my mind. The Bible says renew your mind. So you have to go in prayer and say, God, this is what my issue is. I know you already know, but I just want to reiterate. You know, mm -hmm. this is what's going on with me. I feel this type of way. I have um, issues at work. People don't understand my work. And when I go in to tell them and remind them my work, they still put me back down as you're not you're not on my level, mm -hmm. you know, but they don't realize the God that's in you. They're on no level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he is the God that sits high and look low. So if he's in me and mm -hmm. I am walking in him. I'm already on the level that you know nothing about. So then you have like, Lord, I love my husband, but, you know, he worked at my whole nerves. And he's messing up all my emotions. Mm. You know, I'm mad. I'm happy. I'm sad. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Then I'm, I'm sitting in the corner. Then I look at him rolling my eyes. And then and then the children, I'm like, be quiet. Don't say nothing. I'm all over the place. And if you're all over the place in your family, the woman usually sets the tone and the mm. atmosphere for her home. Mm. So if you all over the place and you're unstable and then your kids looking at you being unstable, your house is in chaos. So until you go in and say, God, renew me as a person, starting with my mind and then work on my mind, work on my heart. Anything that's not like you, take it out and help me become that emotional, stable person so I can now be that person that you've called to be. I can't walk in anything 
that you've asked me to walk into or that you've called me to walk into if my mind ain't right. So get mm. my emotions in check. Get mm. me in check because I want to do your will. I want to be the Christian you call in my character, in my morals, in my integrity, everything that you call me to be. I cannot do that if my mind not right. Yeah. Mm. So me, I just had to get, for me, I had to get my emotional stability in check because mm. it was a little off for a minute. It was a little mm. off. And when I say off, it does not mean I'm crazy. It does not mean I'm crazy. Sometimes you need to go get therapy. Therapy and Jesus work. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes they work hand in hand. Mm. And it's good that you get both if you need it and it does not mean that you're not saved it does not mean that you're not anointed it does not mean you do not have faith in god it does not mean you don't believe in the word of god it it means that you believe in the god that sent the therapist i'm yeah, just yeah. saying yeah because he does put people in place like he mm -hmm. made doctors mm -hmm. they are there for a reason mm -hmm. therapists are there for a reason christian therapists are even better mm -hmm. find one that's still biblically based that you can they can understand where you're coming from when you talk about your spirituality mm -hmm. how how you feel about god what you think god is telling you to do and they can bring that along with the the clinical side and bring those two pieces together yeah. so with that being said that that mental emotional stability is major mm -hmm. you cannot move forward without it yes 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 oh, let's go let's see that bridge back hallelujah yeah. so we see that our, the world system and culture and of itself, they have come up with so many different um, apps, meditations, and all these different things to help us keep our calm and our peace and our cool. And of course, you know, different people are burning the sage and whatnot. <laughs> and then you have um, all these different things going on. So Dr. Williams, how does, how does that affect, uh, hopefully kingdom believers well, check this against the word of God, first and foremost, to know that's something you ought not do. So what is, what is it that we should do in order to build our mental health to stay? So whenever challenges come, when we run into these problems, when we run into these trials so that we can endure, what can we do to help build us and encourage us during that process of endurance? So during that time, start praying. Mm -hmm. Go to your word. Those are biblical foundations. That's your basics. That's where you start. Mm -hmm. Start asking God for clarity. Start asking God to give you some order and bring alignment into your life so that what you're seeing is starting to line up with his word. Because really, when we when we try to figure things out on our own, mm -hmm. we're not equipped to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't have good intentions. It's not that we don't desire to please God, but we don't have all that we need to keep ourselves. So this is why we have to fully rely on God. There has to be some intimacy there. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, this is your time that you spend with God, seeking his face, mm -hmm. understanding what he's saying to you, going into your word and living on that. Don't think it's strange that you are going to have to endure. And as she began to talk about Romans, I also thought about Romans mm -hmm. 5 and 4. And endurance develops strength of character. Mm -hmm. And character strengthens our confidence hope of salvation yes so what that means is you're going to have to endure yes that's the bottom line i know mm -hmm. sometimes we're praying god go ahead and do this and do that mm -hmm. but no god strengthen me to get through it do you realize that character is revealed in transition and change mm -hmm. so what that means is you have to go through something to for your character to be revealed but I don't want to go through. This is too hard. Why are you telling me? I gotta go through. Let me tell you. I was reading a book by uh, Bishop Kevin Wallace, and the first thing he talked about was test reveal character. Mm. And I said, Well, God, I'm already who I am. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. We already think that we are who we are. Mm. There's some cultivation that has to take oh, place oh my. and redefining you. Experience redefines you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you've not lived through anything, how will we know who you truly are? Come on. So as believers, you will go through fire. You will go through trials and don't think it's strange. God has allowed some things to happen. Yes, mm -hmm. he's still in control, but how you respond to this will determine how your character is revealed. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, how, many times, how many times have you come out of relationships, not just with your significant others, but even with friends? Mm -hmm. And maybe you were wrong. And I know we have all sometimes gotten mm -hmm. the short end of the stick, whether it's been at work, whether it's been friends, mm -hmm. family. Sometimes we've been on the opposite side. But how do you handle yourself when that happens? 
when you're transitioning from one ministry to another, when you're transitioning from one job to another, what does it say about your character? Who are you? When supervisor says something, do you get those fingers that develop this ultimate supernatural speed and you begin to start typing and you're getting ready to tell them how you really feel? Or are you the person that says, wait a minute, let me take a step back because I don't know who's watching the God in me. And I need to maintain my character. I need to maintain a standard because that's what your character is. It's your standards. It's your morals. It's who you are. And if God is not represented in who you are, then your character is flawed. Mm -hmm. So if you're that person that you're getting ready to respond and someone has to tap you on your shoulder and say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. think about who you are. Because the way you respond may be your wit. It may be the opportunity to draw people in. Some of us aren't wearing the Jesus shirts. You know, we're not walking around with our Bible saying, blessed and highly favored, hallelujah. <laughs> we're in the marketplace, okay? Yeah, yeah. We're out of the four walls. Mm -hmm. So that may not be the culture there, but based on how I respond to something, mm -hmm. may be the witness that someone needs. Look, I saw what happened to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how you were able to contain yourself. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do? Are you meditating? What do you do? I'm praying. Mm. I'm reading my word. So your character should bear evidence of fruit that you have a relationship with God. Yes, yes, yes. And Bible, we don't look that because that's fine. Right? <laughs> Philippians 2, 12 through 16 says in the New Living Translation, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Hard work to show, work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Mm. Hold work firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will, I will be proud that I did not run this race in vain and that my work was not useless. Hallelujah. So our Christian character, our character should be revealing that we, the character and the nature and the image of God. That's what good godly Christian character does. And you cultivate that, you build that, by thinking the way that God thinks, renewing your mind, reading your word. You mean that simple? All I got to do is read the word? No, you you also need to apply it. Oh, I got to apply there's it. There's some application there. That, Ooh. Yes. And there's some other things. I can't just have the Bible app on my phone, does me at 7 o'clock in the morning, and, and that's it? No. There, you it, Remember, we talked about being intimate. So intimacy is not just reading, but it's also doing. And Ooh. you want to be consistent in what you're doing. When you're building a relationship, it requires trust, dependency, mm -hmm. consistency, yes. reliability. Mm -hmm. So you want to really engage in that thing. I'm telling you, when you're going through your deepest, your darkest moments and seasons, that's when you have to pull even harder on God. Mm -hmm. When you have to really meet him yes, in those yes, moments. Yes. Lord, I'm getting ready to lose my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to keep it together. Yeah. I'm tired of this. I'm getting ready to abort this mm -hmm. very purpose that you called me to. I'm, you can have it back. How many times have you said, God, you can take this back. I don't <laughs> want this call on my life. I, look, the way these people act, let them do whatever they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good. Leave me. I was fine when I was alone, when I could just go to church. Mm -hmm. Why would you call me to do more than just showing up at church? Now you want me to sing. Now you want me to minister. What do you mean? Mm. These people don't love me. And we have mm. to come out of agreement with abandonment and rejection. Come on. Mm. Yes. Come on. Yes. Because yes. it happens. When you accept the call, you're accepting the call. That doesn't mean people are accepting you. Yes. So when that happens, we take on that rejection and abandonment. Maybe God didn't call me. Mm. Yes, he did. We hear well. Yes. Some of us don't give ourselves enough credit. Yes, we hear from, if mm. you're praying all day, God is clearly speaking to you in some <laughs> way, okay? Yes. For anybody who said, Lord, mm. I pray all the time, but you're not talking, yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Walk in obedience. But yes, oh, God, we're coming God. out of agreement with fear. We're coming out of agreement with that rejection and mm. abandonment. I am who he says that I am. Yes, yes. You must live by that every mm, day. Exactly. I may be tired, but I still am 
who God says that I am. I'm going through something, but I still am mm. who God says that I am because yes. that's who he called you to be. Mm. This is your purpose and this is the season to walk in it. Mm. I know you guys have heard that before. They said last season was, no, today. Today. We wouldn't say it if everybody was walking in their purpose. So yeah. if you have that idea, if you have that thing that's trying to develop your character, it is time now to walk and receive what God has for you. Mm. Amen. 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 If you're going mm. through something, I, I have church on Sundays, therapy on Mondays. Mm. I believe that you need to go to church. Mm. You need to stay in his presence. You need to be connected with God. But as Elder said, you may also need a therapist. You may also need a coach. You may also need a course. Mm. She offers courses. You mm. may need something to supplement that. Mm. Sometimes we need that push. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need somebody to literally grab us and say, it's not enough. Yeah. You're moving too slow. Mm -hmm. You're procrastinating. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not moving at the pace that I'm calling. Do we mm -hmm. realize that when we don't move at the pace that God calls us to, there's somebody connected to us. So mm -hmm. when there's a delay in, what, in our obedience, then that person that we're connected to, they're either having to wait mm -hmm. on us to be right. obedient Come on. or God is sending right. somebody else in your place. Right. And I don't need anybody else to do what God right. called Sharice to do. Come on. Because he called Sharice to be Sharice. Yeah. So if you got to connect with somebody else because I'm not in position, that's a problem. Yeah. I'm doing a disservice to God. So mm -hmm. get in position, get in alignment and move today. Yes, yes, yes. Move today. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. We thank God. Amen. So I pray that you're getting something out of this thus far. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to um, get ready for a time of worship. Amen. And then at, with our worship, we'll give you a, a break in a, a intermission. And we'll have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to go into the foyer. You can exit through those double doors and check out the um the different vending table with our books and different things as well as pick up your refreshment yay with the beautiful um charcuterie jars yes beautiful amen and so we thank god for all that he is doing in our lives and we also bless god for the brilliant miss latoya uh, murphy yay <laughs> amen amen would you come and lead us in worship in jesus name hallelujah Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can we just give the Lord some praise right quick? Come on, you've been sitting for a while, you've been listening, but can we just clap our hands and begin to open our mouth and give the Lord praise for being just so good to us? Hallelujah. He's been great, and he's so greatly to be praised. Anybody want to worship him really quick? Come on, just lift your hands to him. Say something to your father. He's listening to you. Come on, open your mouth now. Declare that God, you are God. And besides me, there is no other. We worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. You're awesome to us, God. And we glorify you. Hallelujah. The song simply says this. I love you forever with all my heart I love you
tell the Lord to love him. Come on. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Come on and lift your voice and tell the Lord you love him this morning. Come on, say, I love you, Jesus.
can deliver me, that can set me free. There's nobody like you, nobody, no way. Why do we want to thank him? Oh, because you did. 
Or do you want to go ahead and dismiss? Just we're going to do giveaways and then dismiss you to get your intermission refreshment. Hollywood. Are you enjoying yourself so far? Let me hear a faith with Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus.
The black box inside the black box. Oh, oh you see the black box. Refreshment time. So we thank God for um, Dr. Kelly Pot. Yes, of you go go jewelry. Yes, go 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 fashion. Of oh, God, she donated the um, beautiful two pieces that are up there and everything. Also, also we thank God for um, the beautiful glass wall that's out on the patio. Yay! Take pictures. Yes, Michelle to corn planting. Help us get um. It's not to that beautiful job for us, and we're thankful for it. And of course, your charcuterie jars are in the foyer. So please, um, you're more than welcome to get up at this time and get your assessment. Thank you very much.
and then character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. You know God has said that he is your strength. He is the one who can not only overturn the rider and his chariot, meaning he can be the one who can deliver you from the oppressor and the vehicle of oppression. I need you to wrap your mind around that for just a second. And that's um, that's a scripture based out of, I want to say, is it Ezekiel? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it was Ezekiel. I saw that one. And so, um, I know it's a psalm. I'm sorry. That was a psalm. <laughs> but it's, it's in my last podcast. But anyway, the when God, when you understand that you're being attacked from something, something or something's come up on you in reference to that challenging situation, Let's say with the work issue, they let's say they over they passed over me for a job of some sort. Now all of a sudden I'm starting to feel some kind of way. <laughs> you don't see me, you don't see the work I did. I came here than they <laughs> I say than they do. I do their work for them and they're not even turning in their own work, but you're gonna give them the promotion. And so these spirits of anger. Bitterness, resentment, those are now trying to oppress you. They are the oppressor. Is the vehicle of your job, the vehicle of that promotion, the vehicle of that workplace environment, that person who is delivering the message. So we understand the oppressor and then the vehicle of oppression. So whatever the oppressor is, what is attacking you, it's not necessarily the person, there's a spirit behind the thing. There's a spirit that is operating in that person. So that spirit is for the writer, I'm sorry, yeah, the writer, and then the horse, as the scripture would say, is the vehicle that is being, that's carrying, it's that person. When we come against the enemy, that spirit, then the demonic spirit. And thank you, God, for, you know, for replacing it trying to cast out that spirit with all of its companions, and then we thank God for the spirit of being replaced there. So, and the peace being replaced there, but that way that person has the opportunity to have the freedom. The other need to come in and have a work in them and through them. To do what? To irritate you. To get you to feel some kind of way. To stay in your feelings. Because the enemy knows if he can get you to stay in your feelings, you are not operating in your faith. Operating in the authority of God. You're not operating in the kingdom authority God has put inside of you. You can actually cast him out. Yeah. Up in that feelings, Elder Durant. And we're starting to feel insecure. They passed me I feel some kind of way. It's her. And then you want to get all upset and, you know, and and react like some of the, the, the peoples that they do on the little shows with the housewives and whatnots and all that stuff. <laughs> Or not. So how how do we come how do this kingdom believers how should we have to realize that who is behind it? Mm -hmm. When you realize who is behind it, it's not actually the person as you thought they it's not actually the person. It's it's the enemy working inside the person. Sometimes they don't even know they're being used. Mm -hmm. They really don't. They really do not. So even talking about me, I got them with that word. I trained them and they gave them the actual supervisor job that the supervisor that they do. Mm. And I, I got them out. Was not at all. Mm -hmm. I was angry. I felt like Sister Reese. I wanted to get my fingers to typing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I had to realize God was like, that was her position. If I wanted you in it, you would have got it. Mm. Wow. That's what I wanted. 
but we have to realize what does God want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to realize our wants have to align up with what he says. The Bible always says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which is his right way of doing things, and all these other things will be added. If you get that part right, mm -hmm. that job will come. He can gave you the job. I was like, yes, Lord, let's see if I got that job. I did this, I did that, and this, that, and the third. But then I saw the pressure that that person was under. Mm. And how they were watching other people, but the watcher was being watched. Mm. And they looked like he didn't last three years. Mm. And they saw him. He said he was going on sabbatical. They told him, just don't come back. Mm. I said, now, Father, God had took that, and that thing had oppressed me. He knew I was not ready for the pressure. Sometimes what you're asking God for, you're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. He has to build your character. He has to build that respect level because people have to respect you in order to work to do a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say, I'm just coming to get a check. But sometimes the way you treat people, then people will do things for you that they wouldn't normally do. They're just like, okay, since she asked, I do it because she asked. You know what I'm saying? So you have to build that level. Now, see, that. The Lord always knows he, it hits the people first before the messenger before it hits anybody else. This week alone, the situation happened to me about my character. A young lady came into the office. She had been there before, and the last time she was there, a situation happened at the front desk where I was. Um, a supervisor came over with very rude to me while I was talking. They said, excuse me, pardon me, cut right across the desk. The was looking like, what is going on? And I just stopped. I said, yes. And I told the patient, I'm sorry, hold on a minute. I answered the question. I was like, okay, I do apologize. And I went back. She came back this week. She said, I remember you from the last time. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, you do? I said, what do you remember? I said, you got some more than you remember? Sometimes you want to go right straight and go back to me. I said, what did I do? Me. She was like, no, it was good. They came real nasty at you. But you were just as calm and you apologized to me. Then they supposed to apologize to me. Mm -hmm. She said, back in the street, we called it nice nasty. I said, well, I wasn't trying to be nasty. I was not trying to be nasty. I responded. She said, no, you responded correctly. I would have been nice nasty. She said, but you kept your composure. I said, you never know who's watching you. You never know when you'll see them again. And you want your light to shine. That men may see God's work when they glorify him, not you. Yeah. Glorify him. So when that happened, I had to start checking myself when I'm, I'm in front of people, how I walk, how I talk. Because then, if you keep talking to them in a certain manner, and they be like, hmm, it's something different. What is it about you? It's the Christ in me. Because certain workplaces, you just can't come up and say, you know, well, I'm saving, I'm sanctified, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me get my oil. I'm going to put my oil in this church. <laughs> I can't do that. So God will give you strategy on how to let them know who you really are. Mm. Sometimes you ain't got to boast on who you are. Just be. Yeah. Sometimes just be. And God will allow certain situations to happen that he will place you in, mm -hmm. so when he placed in you can come out. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, one lady was like, if I die in surgery, can you call my child? I said, man, we don't die here. Mm -hmm. We get you right in the single home. Yeah. We don't die up in here. We don't do body bags. Mm -hmm. But she said, can you just pray? And before I knew it, knowing in the workplace, the same things you cannot do, I automatically start praying. And having to the prayer, I stopped and said, I was like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, and I opened my eyes and looked around, nobody. Mm -hmm. God allow you to have those moments. Mm -hmm. And before she didn't say, she said, can you just come back there and peek your head in? Mm -hmm. I just want to see your face before mm -hmm. they take me back. I said, if I had time, I will. And I did that. She said, you don't know what that meant to me. That said a lot about you. See, your character don't always have to me. I'm willing to have a sign on that I'm saved and sanctified. It's how you treat people, how you talk to them, how you love on them when they feel they're unlovable. Mm -hmm. And when they are rude, you can still have that same demeanor. And that'd be hard, man. Because sometimes they'll be asked for it, but you can't do it when they ask for it. You cannot. You just cannot. You have to give them what God tells you. To give them, and most of the time, when you start talking in a common demeanor and you're showing them the love of Christ, it comes to beasting them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to allow the love of God that's on the inside of you to calm the beast in someone else, mm -hmm. to calm the nerves, to calm the emotion, yeah. to calm their, their anger because we didn't have it all. But you also got to know that the prayer that you pray will always have to be loud. But when you pray in your spirit, God still hears you. Yes. He still understands. And you said, God, in this moment, I really want to be ugly. He said, but in this moment, if we do that, what will it accomplish? Mm. Will, we, will my grace and my mercy and my love be shown? Mm. Will they see that? Or will they just see you being ugly? Mm. 
and then do they see you again in church? Come on, look what else he told God. Thank you. I'm about to preach right in the phone with him. Now she got to go. Mm. Because the last time she was real nasty, but she wanted to tell me how good God is. See, people call it those two things. Don't think when they see you in the street, they don't, they're not watching you. Mm -hmm. And you say you're standing for God because they're going to see you again. Mm -hmm. And you want them to see the same Christ in you. Not that you want to be perfect because nobody is. Just be authentic, authentically you. Just be you. God created us all different. He created us to be who we are in him. And let that show. And when you let that show, you can't go wrong because you're staying in your lane. I always got to stay in my lane. And that's what I was telling um, Dr. Sharice. I was like, she was like, oh, this is so wonderful being here. I was like, God, y'all just don't know what has done for me. Mm. Y'all think I'm, I'm sitting up here, I'm talking to y'all, but you don't realize that I sat here this morning, how the enemy tried to tell me that I didn't deserve to be between two doctors mm. because that I wasn't on their level. Mm. And God had to reassure me. Mm. Well, I mean, what I think to you might not be Dr. Shoes or Dr. Moore, mm. but you just read them. Yeah. Yeah. that good. You're that good. Mm. Mm. Now, you can do that well. You can do that well. Okay, then I can trust you with more. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to learn just like y'all. Mm. Let me tell you about other evangelists. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> she has an awesome testimony. Now, first of all, the anointing that rests on you, there's a cost to that oil. There's a cost to that oil. And you don't know, you never know what somebody has actually been through. And what God will require of you in order for you to be able to be in a position, on a platform, in a space, or in a place, in order to minister deliverance, healing, or to even teach other people. God has healed and delivered her from cancer, um, from, uh, uh, I can't even tell it all. <laughs> Between the relationship issues, dramas, traumas, all that stuff. And some things are in her book, you need to get her book so you can read more about that. But we see how God has kept her and that God has given her an opportunity and she has answered the call well and responded well, not to stay in her feelings, mm -hmm. but to rise above her feelings, operate in her faith. Yes. That's right. And don't you know that's when the anointing and the power of God mm -hmm. begins to, uh, to flow in the spaces and the places mm -hmm. and really to cast those demons out? Yes, that's right. Ah, uh, and I know for myself, because I'm... Um, my mother, uh, the late Apostle Doreen J. King, uh, it's in, in one of the books I, uh, that, I, that I've written as well, God gave her an awesome, awesome deliverance ministry, and, and especially in teaching and preaching about how to apply the practical, um, in a practical way, God's word. And as part of my legacy, I do that, not just because it was her, but because God instilled that in me. I did not know that when I said yes to God and yes to the legacy, mm -hmm that some of the things that my mother went through, I would have to go through. Yes. And some of the things that she didn't even go through, I would still have to go through for myself to build my character. Yes. There were some tests and some trials I had to go through and still going through in certain areas. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just enough that my mother transitioned to glory three days before my 33rd birthday, three months before my wedding. And then with my first child, I had uh, my first uh, born child, uh, Tiffany, she was born about uh, premature, about, 30, 30, about 33 weeks, and she was in the NICU for an extended stay for about almost eight weeks, so I was a first time NICU mom in that, and thank God I had a healthy delivery with my second child, and then with my third child, he had open heart surgery at seven days old. I did not realize it when the, the doctors and the obstetrician had told me that if he did not have this open heart surgery, he would um, most definitely die within seven to ten days because his aortic arch was too narrow and that the blood would not flow correctly through his body uh, to the rest of his body. And so here I am holding my son and riding, in, uh, riding from Virginia, Virginia Beach um, up to the university hospital. Um, five days after he was born, riding in the ambulance, and just and I didn't realize that the trauma on your body of, after having a C-section, riding in a bumpy ambulance, 
three hours mm -hmm. could cause you personal issues too. So by the time we got there and I checked my son in, don't you know I was shaking in the NICU and the nurses had me admitted to the hospital. So now I'm on one floor and he's on another and we're there by ourselves because my husband's back in Virginia Beach taking care of my two daughters. My mom's in glory. Dad's wealth and ministry doing taking care of stuff. Church family, they got stuff going on. Mm -hmm. As much as they wanted to be there, it would not have been the same testimony had they been there. God wanted me by myself. That's right. <laughs> so as I go through that healing process and trying to figure out where to go, how to get to the Ronald McDonald house, I got to walk and I got I got you know, your stitches and you know, oh my goodness, you know, cut me open again for a third time, <laughs> whatnot. All of these things they add up. And then you go through things with your marriage, with finances, mm -hmm. with education. Mm -hmm. And then you try to figure out who you are in of yourself. Mm -hmm. When your beautiful Fortune 500 job says, you know what? Thank you so much for teaching the people who are now replacing you. You're now resource actioned. <laughs> Basically, you've been laid off. Yep. <laughs> and now, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And you're going into full-time ministry, this, that, and the other. And what God has called you to do doesn't look like what anybody else is doing. My God. And then the enemy wants you to start comparing yourself yes. to other people. You done been at this for all this time. You don't have all that training. You only got that many people. You got no, no, no. You done been doing this for all this time and it doesn't look like this. It doesn't look like that. The enemy will start to make you doubt yourself. Well, let me not make you. He will try. That's why we say you have to stay in the word of God. You have to renew your mind daily through the word. Know that you are who God says you are. Yes, God has called me. I am who God says I am. I know that I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That God loves me so much that he lawyered up him with himself. Yes. He knew the issues and the clingy blood that would still be on me when I was polluted in my own blood. Mm. He cleaned me up. And not only did he clean me up, guess what? He adorned me with jewels. Come on. Huh? The beauty that he put on me, on me, and he even considers my very blood precious. Come on. That's why I can now respond with a kingdom mentality. Mm. I don't have to stay in my feelings when people say this and say that. Because guess what? I know who I am. Yes. I am not going to stoop to your level. Mm -hmm. I am not going to agree or compromise. I'm not going to partner with pity. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that. I am not going to um, try, uh, try to hang out with depression and anger and bitterness and resentment. I'm not going to get stuck on, well, so-and-so did it, and they got this big place. They got all these people. And da -da 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 -da. I don't know what they went through. Huh. One, um, I got, went to one conference and it was fabulously done and everything and God showed up, showed up. I thought this was this person's like fourth time doing it. Come to find out it was their very first conference. I was like, good God from Zion. I was like, oh my goodness. And, but guess what? That person went through something. Mm -hmm. Their house burnt down. I don't want a house burnt down. And like that. I, I, I don't want it that bad. <laughs> but guess what? What God has for me truly is for me. There was a mandated audience. And so the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because in order for your character to be developed, in order for the anointing to rest upon you to operate in certain things with oil, like olive oil, the olives must be what? Pressed. So you're going to have to go through some stuff. And it's the way that you go through that matters. Without complaining, let's look at the, what the word says. Make sure you go over these scriptures at home. The, the word says to do everything without complaining and arguing. The King James says without complaining and disputing. Um, and this is coming from Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 14. And it says, so no one can criticize you. You live that clean life. You need to be blameless and harmless as children of God. Because remember, you're to be lights in this crooked generation and perverse generation. We know how perverse this generation is. So we must yet and still be the light. Your character needs to show the light. So if I'm going through God's way, how do I go through? If you go back up to verse 12, it says, go through by obeying God with deep reverence and fear. 
go through a deep reverence and fear. And then also, if you look at um, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, it also shows us even more on how to go through because of the great and precious promises that God has for us and the marvelous glory that he's going to manifest in us. He wants to make sure that we can um, truly partake and be able to share his divine nature. Because when we share in the divine nature of God, that's what helps us to escape the world's corruptions. That's what helps us. Not to act like housewives from whatever county and country you want to be like. <laughs> you know, that's what helps us. So in Second Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 5, it talks about what do we add to our faith. Because we're not operating in fear, we're, we're operating in faith. So you have to add to your faith. And this is where the application is coming in. And this is what we're going to activate today. Hallelujah. And so with that, add to your faith. King James says virtue. New Living says moral excellence. Whatever you do, you need to do it with the spirit of excellence, with integrity. If you're running late, be honest and just say you're running late. Don't say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll be there in five minutes. I'm just around the corner. And you haven't even left your house yet. You haven't even gotten dressed out the bed. That means you're just straight up lying. God sees that. Just because the person on the other side of the phone or the text can't see it doesn't mean that God doesn't see it. And don't you know God holds you accountable for every word and action and even the very thoughts mm -hmm. as big girls in God. God doesn't want us to be petty. He doesn't want us to deceive ourselves. He doesn't want us to be manipulative, even in little things. Because if, if God can trust you with the little things, then guess what? He, you're opening up yourself and enlarging your capacity to receive the big things. So if you can just start telling the truth just with that, when you're late, just say you're late. That's it. Hallelujah. More excellence. And then to more excellence, knowledge. You've got to study the word. It's going to take more now. You can't just do what you used to do in Sunday school. It, got, it, 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 it takes more. You have to have a love and a thirst for God's word. It sometimes it means you go and you um, take the uh, extra Bible classes that the dean of, um, what's the name of the school? Logos Bible Institute. Yes. Maybe you got to take some courses as Logos Bible Institute. I've taken them myself. That's how I got my doctorate. Praise Jesus. Amen. So you go to Logos Bible Institute. It helps encourage you in the word of God, teach you some foundational things. And I guarantee you, every single time you take this woman's class, you will get revelation <laughs> beyond yes. compare. Yes. Yes. Revelation beyond compare. Hallelujah. And that is Dean Dr. Um, Georges. Praise Jesus. Thank God for her. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so knowledge. And with knowledge, self-control. Self-control. Stop staying up so late watching Netflix and all this other stuff. Stop binge watching all these things. You're putting so much energy and effort into trying to watch a whole season of something in one shot. You're putting more energy and effort into that than you are in actually spending time with God. Where you put your energy and your effort into, that's what you worship. That's what you serve. That has now become your master. In Matthew, it talks about you, know, you can't serve. Jesus said you can't serve two masters. They either love one and hate the other. You'll, be, you'll despise one and be devoted to the other. So where is your attention and your time and your energy going to? Ah, and so self-control, self-control, not just with food, but also with your flesh. Sometimes you need to self-control and exercise, self-control and doing some other things. Hallelujah. And then with self-control, patient endurance. Remember, the tests and the trials, they're coming. And you're going to go through, you're going to endure, endure with patience, endure with peace. Go through praising God. Go through rejoicing, knowing that God has got the answer, even though you don't know what the answer is. Right. Even though you can't see it yet, it hasn't been revealed yet, you're kind of getting a little antsy. Guess what? Make your flesh, bring your flesh under subjection, excuse me, <laughs> under subjection, and worship through it. Worship through that weight. Hallelujah. And then with that, God, with that patient endurance, godliness. And time in the presence of the Lord. It makes such a difference. 
sometimes it may seem so hard to even in the mo in like to get up earlier than everybody else in your regular schedule. And even if it's for 30 minutes, just to, to sit and dwell and abide in the presence of the Lord without looking at your phone, without thinking of all the things you got to do today, how much laundry you got to do. Oh, yeah, you know what? I can make that quick on my phone. Put it down. There's, um, there was a challenge that came out with another ministry group that I'm a part of, and it was to, um, to abide. It was called the Abiding Challenge. And for 30 minutes every day, can you just sit with instrumental worship music on, not with lyrics uh, that kind of speaks to you and gets you all focused with certain things, but just instrumental music. Just sit, sit your tail down. <laughs> sit. <laughs> Yeah. Not don't, don't multitask. This is not a multi. God doesn't multi in the sense of undivided loyalty. God doesn't divide his loyalty to us. So why are we dividing our attention towards him? So can you just sit, sit your tail, just sit and just tell God who he is to you. Dwell, sit down and then tell him who he is to you in whichever way you form and fashion that is. Lord, I thank you for being my mind regulator right now. I thank you for being my counselor. Lord, I thank you for, you know, providing food and you know, even my top ramen. I thank you for my top ramen. I thank you, Lord, for, you know, for the lights being on. Lord, I thank you because just tell him who he is. He's your provider. He's the one who's kept you sane. I often said, um, if I didn't have God on my side in his word, I'd be crazier than a soup sandwich. Think about that, a soup sandwich. All right? I, no, it doesn't work. So tell him who he is. And after you dwell, you tell, then can we commit some things to him? Lord, I commit my day to you. And all the things that I'm concerned about, my flesh is concerned about accomplishing that day, I commit those things to God. Lord, I thank you. I commit unto you this line item, this thing I have on my agenda, that thing that's my concern, my kids, my family, that little, my pinky toe, because you know I need a pedicure. Lord, I'm, I'm going to commit that to you too. Whatever it is, even the little things, God cares about those little things. And as you commit those things unto him and you're in his presence and then you carry. Lord, I'm going to choose to carry out today your presence, your love, your anointing, your strength. And that helps you to be intentional in your character to demonstrate love, to demonstrate grace to people, not to be forgiving because remember, all these things that God has for you, one of the sure enough things that will block it and, and cause you to stumble is unforgiveness. If you do not choose to forgive others, forgiveness is not about saying that what they did was right or wrong. Forgiveness is about relinquishing that right to retaliate against them. It's about letting go and letting God handle them. Because as you choose to give that case over to God, the righteous judge, and whatever decision he he comes up with, you're in agreement with, because he knows the master plan, he knows the bigger picture. Because of that, he will handle it, and then you're praying that God would bless that person. You're blessing them. Lord, bless them, keep them. Lord, give them an opportunity to choose you. Lord, give them, prosper them, because as we bless those that curse us and pray for those who despitefully use us, guess what? And you pray for them hard, guess what? That's how much more God's gonna bless you. Hallelujah. And so as we do that, we also add um, brotherly affection, care for your brothers and sisters in Christ, and love for everyone. And love for everyone. It's, not a, it's making sure that we demonstrate the love of God even to our, the strangers, the neighbors, those in the community, those in the world. I'm not saying that you have to come in covenant agreement and partnership with everybody. I'm talking about demonstrating the love of God. Because you don't want the invitation to the kingdom that's handed to them to be tainted with your bitterness, with your anger, with your, with your, um, uh, with your contempt. And so these are the things that we must activate and apply in making sure that we build the kingdom character and keep our spirits right. So that's part of our spiritual well-being in and of itself. That's part of our spiritual well-being. And so we thank God for that. Um, before, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any cards that need to be collected? Is any cards, cards, cards? Yep. Anybody had a? Nope, nope, nope. Okay, good. All right. So, Elder, um, is there anything you wanted to add, Elder? 
Um, I only wanted to add one thing. I just um, saw this quote that really stuck out to me. It says, integrity is the ingredient that will enable you to forge rapidly ahead on your highway that leads to success. Mary Kay said that. Mm, the lady wow. who owns Mary Kay said that. Yeah. And that stuck out to me. She was like, she was saying your integrity, not nobody else's, focus <laughs> on you. Your integrity will enable you to rapidly forge ahead. You will cut your time down by doing and being a good form of character, have integrity, and then cultivate. That means continue to learn, continue to um, grow into who you're supposed to be in God. If you keep cultivating that thing, anything that you take care of, like my sister-in-law, I don't have to bring um, bless her heart. She does. And she goes out and she was like, oh, I got to fix my soul. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to work. I'm like, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. But she's cultivating that because she wants what she is trying to grow to produce properly. Yes. So with that, that's all I want to leave with you. Integrity mm -hmm. is the ingredient that will enable you to forge rapidly mm -hmm. ahead on the highway that leads to success. Mm -hmm. Mary Kay said that you know Mary Kay is multi-million dollars. She she doing her thing. Um, so if she can say that, she didn't she didn't get deep with the with the um scriptures and everything. Simple. Some things are just so simple that we make complicated. Mm. Just yes. watch your character. Mm. Be emotionally stable. Mm -hmm. Ask God to regulate your mind. Walk in integrity. That when people call your name, it's not saying anything negative attached to it. Mm -hmm. But they talk about the good person that God has created you to be. And cultivate that gift that God has placed in you. Amen. You can't go wrong with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Dr. Sharice. Let me just say this, guys. It was probably about five years ago before I even, maybe I, was, I hadn't even been in the doctoral program. And I was doing the worship while Elder Dorita was the keynote, okay? Mm -hmm. So while she's talking about me sitting at this table, I remember when I was trying to get to the table, and I had to say <laughs> my way to get to the table. <laughs> so all I'm saying is your character will proceed you. If you mm -hmm. allow God to build some things in you, you'll watch your seat change and transition over time where you may start here, but your desire is there. Yes. But you let, you go through and you endure through that thing mm -hmm. and you watch God move through you while you're in a season of transition and there will be space for you yes. and places. Now, I would have never thought, mind you, I was doing the work and the worship <laughs> is amazing, but I was doing the worship, never thought that one day I would be given a seat at the table with someone who had already been at the table. Yes. So this was an okay. opportunity that she was even speaking today. I was just soaking it up, just soaking up the information. If I use it now, I try to remember to give you credit. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. oh, I do take people's things, but I use it in there. It's God, you know, God gave oh, yeah, it yeah. to you. Well, there you go. <laughs> but the point is, you know, as you are going through, continue to monitor your character yes. because your seat at the table is coming. Mm -hmm. When you're obedient and you pursue the things of the kingdom and you walk in your assignment and your purpose and calling, there will be space at the table for you. Mm -hmm. So just get ready. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. A consistency is most definitely key to all of this. You put, posted a quote earlier this week on Facebook about um, time, yes. that it's a process. And so the pro I, I know a lot of times we are in this microwave culture. We like things done quick, fast, and in a hurry. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand that God's timing is not our timing. And so there are certain things that do take time. And if you're consistent during that time, if you're praising and through that time, if you're worshiping and through that time, if you are actually spending time and dedicating your time to him, you're going to see the production and the, and the fruit of the things come to fruition in different areas because you never know what God has going on behind the scenes. You never know what God has going on behind the scenes. And so I thank God for that. Amen. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to pray, and um, we're going, I'm going to pass it along to. And as we pray, I want you to be intentional, intentional about what you are saying to God and what you want God to say to hear from God concerning yourself. Because we want to make sure we activate the word that we have actually poured into you today. We've talked, we've talked about the scriptures. We've talked about the principles. Now we want to really act those things.
And if you desire prayer afterward, you're more than welcome to. In Jesus' name, we'll be, uh, we'll be happy to pray with you. Because God wants them, you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And that he wants your character to be the light in this dark and perverse generation in this season. And that your character does not, and the zeal that God has put on the inside of you does not have to dwindle down to nothing. He, he wants you to stir up that thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, can we have some instrumental music if it's okay? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise and let's just worship him. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Lord, we thank you for being the one true and living God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we have received on today. We know it is not by accident that we are here. Lord, we thank you that your word has been seated on the inside of us to remind us of who you are and who you have called and purposed us to be. Lord, we thank you right now that you have begun to regulate our minds in the name of Jesus. We bind and cast out every spirit of confusion, every spirit oh, of frustration. Oh, and, clear, and we thank you, Lord, for clarity right now in Jesus' name. Oh, God, whatever it is that has been oh, tormenting our minds, every spirit of torment, Oh, it must go in Jesus' name with all of its companions. Oh, spirit of anxiety, worry, stress, depression, oppression, suppression. We bind and cast it out in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you right now that you regulate our minds according to your word. Oh God, your word says, great peace have they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. And Lord God, we thank you right now, oh God, that you are even delivering us from the spirit of offense. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. oh God, we thank you that you are showing us how to acknowledge your authority concerning different matters in our lives. Oh God, and we choose to agree with God concerning the thing. Oh God, forgive us, Lord, for trying to take authority over it and trying to do it in our own timing and try to regulate it in our own strength. Oh God, we release it unto you right now. Oh God, we want to think the way that you think. Oh God, we thank you that, that even the principles, oh God, of your word shows us that we need to truly allow you to have full dominion and reign in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. We're choosing to walk in the excellence of your word. That we're getting the knowledge of your word. Give us an offer for your time and attention to anything that would try to be at war with your word. Oh God, we don't want to be at war with you, Lord God. We choose to think on those things that are lovely, that are just, that are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, we choose to think on those things in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of, of bitterness and resentment against other people. That spirit of comparison. Oh, we bind and cast it out in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we thank you that you have given us every single thing that we need. Oh, God, that pertains to life and godliness. We thank you for clarity, oh, God, and clear direction for where you would have us to go. That you make every crooked path straight. That your angels are there to assist us. Oh, God, to lead us in the path that you have prepared just for us. Oh God, we open our ears to hear your voice because it's the voice of the good shepherd we will follow and a stranger we will not. Oh God, we thank you right now. Oh, we thank you, God. For healing our hearts, God. For healing our hearts, God. For healing our hearts, God. For whether we've been wounded and bruised and disappointed and discouraged, Lord, we thank you that your love, oh God, is mending the broken pieces. Oh God, you have not forgotten us. Lord, you see us. You see the bloody mess that we made of ourselves and you still love us. You cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. 
Rabasatayo. You have made us new creatures in Christ. All things have passed away because all things have become new. Oh, Ramasa, you give us clean hands and a pure heart. You're renewing the right spirit on the inside of us as we choose to follow you. This day, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you that we are choosing to endure the situations. We're going to endure the problems, endure the challenges. We choose to go through with joy because, Lord, you have the final say. You've given us the answers that we need. You have already provided. You've already provided. And we thank you that your love is not only in us, but flowing through us in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, oh God, for being uh, bitter, <laughs> for being cantankerous. Oh, forgive us for being nasty, nice to the people. Forgive us, God. Oh, my mouth's sake, they are. Forgive us for not watching our mouth and the words that came out. Forgive us, oh God. We cancel every word curse right now in the name of Jesus that has been spoken against others and even against ourselves. Oh God, every ungodly thing that has been seeded in us, we uproot it right now in Jesus' name. And let the oil of your anointing, oh God, heal, purify, deliver, and set us free. Oh God, and we will be mindful to maintain our deliverance by abiding in your word, by abiding in your presence. Oh God, by applying the things that we have learned here today in the name of Jesus. God, I must say. And God, we thank you that we'll press past perceived limitation. Hallelujah, God, that we are not inferior, God, but we accept who we are in your word, oh God, that our purpose will align with who you've called us to be, God. So we embrace the call on our lives, Jesus. We embrace the purpose that you've given us, oh God, and we cancel the assignment of fear, oh God. We cancel the assignment of fear in the name of Jesus. Every thought that's not like you, we bring it under your subjection. We cancel every assignment of fear. You can do it. Because God said that you can and he's called you to do it. So we shall walk and go forth. We shall go forth in excellence, God. For you created a new thing in us, oh God. And we shall give birth in this season, oh God. For you're aligning us with our purpose, oh God. So we humble ourselves and we set ourselves aside, God. So that you can use us freely, oh God. God, that we would take on the nature of you, oh God. That we are fearless, oh God. And that we are worthy of your love, God. And we thank you because you're changing our mind. God, there's a shift that's taking place even in this room, oh God. We come against anxiety. We come against depression, God. We come against inferiority, oh God. We come against grief in the name of Jesus, God. For we are who you called us to be, oh God. We are excellent in your eyes, oh God. And we thank you, oh God. That we shall do what you called us to do. There are no excuses in the kingdom. Yes, there are no excuses in the kingdom. So, God, we thank you, God, that everything that we've been carrying, we're laying every weight aside, God, for every fear, every anxiety, every trauma, God. Things that oh, we call upon release. We release every stronghold. Every chain that's binding us. It shall be broken on today. When you leave here, you shall walk in freedom. You shall know your identity. Every time the enemy said no, God said yes. Every time the enemy said that you couldn't, God said you could. And today we embrace your power. We embrace your authority. We embrace dominion. Today is the day, oh God, that we walk in the calling, that we walk in the anointing with power and demonstration, with signs and wonders and miracles that shall follow Yamashika. So I call out purpose in the name of Jesus. We call out purpose in the name of Jesus. We reveal true character in you, oh God, for you have made us new, oh God, and we embrace it in you, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, we thank you today for this moment in time 
You have allowed us, God. You knew what we needed, oh God. You knew what our heart has craved for. Our spirit has longed for, God. Help us to not mishandle the anointing that rests on us. Help us not to mishandle it, God. Not to mishandle it, God. Help us not to abort, oh God. The child that's being born inside of us, help not to abort the anointing, oh God, that you are putting us, the gift, oh God, the calling, oh God. God, we have seen so many go before us, oh God. Let us not be weary in our well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not, God. We ask that you give us a faint not spirit, oh God. Give us a faint not spirit, oh God. We shall not faint in this season, God. We shall not back down, oh God. We shall not dummy down, oh God. But we will walk in what you told us, oh God. We will speak only what you say, speak, God. Tell us how to say it, God, and we'll say it, oh God. Tell us how to do it, and we'll do it, oh God. Help us be in position, oh God, to hear your voice, God. We need to hear you clearly, God. We need to hear you clearly, God. Calm the noise in our heads, God. Calm our spirits, God. We need to hear you, oh God. We ask that you continue, oh God, to cultivate our hearts, God. Break up the fallow ground, oh God. Anything that's not like you, that's resting on the inside of us, oh God. We ask that you take it out. We ask that you take it out today, God. We cannot walk around with it, God. We can't walk in our anointing with it, God. It's a heavy load to carry, God. We take it on for no reason, God. We ask, oh God, that the, the thoughts of suicide, God, that why am I here? Why did you have me be born into the midst of this, God? We ask, oh God, right now, oh God, those who are in this room are watching us online today, God. Yes, we're talking to you. Yes, he's talking to you. He's letting you know that do not, do not commit suicide. And everybody thinks it's always a natural suicide. I'm talking about spiritual suicide. Do not do it. Do not turn back from what should come. Because it does not look like you thought it would look. It doesn't feel like you thought it would feel. And things are not happening like you thought it would happen. And you said, God, it cannot be you. So I'm just going to turn back. God said, today you shall not. Yes. Forward you shall march. Yes. Because I have your back. Yes. I'm guiding your footsteps in front of you, but I, I got your back. I surround you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I surround you. God, we ask that we do not allow what people say to hinder the call on our life, God. I don't care what negativity they spill out their mouth, sometimes not even knowing what they're saying and how they're saying it and how it makes the other person feel. But God, help us to guard our tongue. Help us to guard our tongue. Only speak what you say, speak. Only say what you say, say. God, we do those things and hear you clearly and do what you tell us to do. No good thing will he withhold from you because we're walking upright before him. God, today as we leave, but not from your presence ever, that you rest, rule, and abide in our lives, God. We make room for you, God. We make room. We clean out the clutter. We clean out the clutter from past, from past, or even present that's trying to clutter our minds, our hearts, and our spirit. We ask that you renew a right spirit within us, God. Renew our minds. Take us to the place that we know you've called us to be, but we've seen so far, God. Say, so God, I can't get there. Those he calls, he qualifies. Don't ever doubt the call on your life. Don't ever doubt that you hear God. It might look foolish to others. It might not make sense to people. It might sound crazy. But if you do what God say do, I tell you and I tell you this, you'll hear me well. God will show you why. He will show you the why. Because he is the who. Because he is the who makes all things possible. God, we thank you today for everything you've done in this place today. In this place today. Shall never, shall never, shall never, shall never be the same. You shall never be the same. You will hear these words in your head 
as you go throughout your day, throughout your week, throughout your month, throughout your year, throughout your life, you will hear the word that God needed you to hear. And it will resonate in your spirit over and over again. Do not faint. Do not faint in this season. God still has his hand on you. He still has his hand on you. God, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we seal these prayers and the word and the work of the, in, of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? Amen. amen? amen. And amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We give God praise and we are dismissed. Hallelujah.